Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly and today we're gonna talk about some books I read in July. <laughs> So I am pretty sure that I actually, you know, read all the books that I put on my TBR. Like, what? Does that even happen? Let's just appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I've got some books. Uh, I'm not really sure what order they've ended up in because <laughs> when I put books down I accidentally put books everywhere and then I have to accumulate them again and then I have to go collect them from places and yeah anyway let's start with the first book Summer I Shell Cottage by Lucy Diamond so contemporary read very adult contemporary read as in I think you mostly would appreciate this book if you're like 40 plus. No. Um <laughs> sorry. I think this is like a perfect book for someone that like has a family of some sort cuz mainly we follow a bunch of different people really. But really what this is so there's a husband and a wife. Let's call them mum and dad. Well, let's call them mum and dad. So, in the early days of their marriage, I guess, um, they buy this little cottage. And each year they come back to this cottage, I don't know how many times, but they come visit every now and again. And then one day, the husband dies suddenly of a heart attack and everything is like uprooted so the mother um and her grown-ass kids and their kids little kids they decide they will go like for last time just go and reminisce and like yes let, let's go let's go do this so <laughs> that's that's really a lot. They go and then they kind of directly find out that the husband that died, um, he might have led a bit of a double life because the lady that cleans the house, the cottage for them, she has a son who happens to be his son. Intrigue. Um, and his he's like this little eight-year-old kid and like what the fuck um and then there's the the daughter the grown daughter she's a doctor and she kind of do like a little mishap kind of a thing um with one of her patients she she kind of makes a little mistake and so she's trying to like okay taking a break from that and like reconciling and getting her drinking in hand maybe would be a good idea uh, among other things and then there's the son who wants to be a writer like his dear old father who's a famous author apparently and he's just not that successful so and he's lied to his family as well so it's about the whole family comes together and they sort of like unravel each and every character's truth and yeah there's a bit there's a bit of a mystery plot behind it all but you know it's 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 a contemporary so you know happy ending more or less sun sea sand and secrets that's apparently the tagline i i enjoyed it um but it was a bit too slow for me. Um, I would have liked a bit of a more, a bit of a faster pace, I guess. But still a good rate, still a good rate. And then we picked up, why am I, I just talking to myself? Um, then I picked up Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson, which is the second book in the uh, A Good Girl Guide to Murder 
series. I think that's what the series is called as well, isn't it? Anyway, um, I really, really enjoyed that first book. I really enjoyed the little prequel novella as well. It was kind of funny. Um, I enjoyed this book, but not as much as the first one. But I have heard that uh, this isn't as good as the first one. Um, and then the third one is apparently even better than the first one, which I'm not sure how that's going to happen. But, um, so we kind of pick up with Pip and the aftermath of the first book. Um, so she's like, there's a trial and she's making this podcast and then, you know, someone else goes missing. And who do you call? Well, it's not Ghostbusters, it's apparently Pip. Yeah. I enjoyed it, but not as much as the first one. Ah, oh, yes. Never Night by R.J. Kristoff. Okay, so first of all, the print in this is super, super, super tiny. And it was a pain in my ass. It was a pain to my eyes. Um, so I had a very difficult time reading this and not, you know, sitting down and reading this. I had to do like little chunks at a time. And also, it took me a good long while to understand why we were getting like the same scene and from like different kind of angles. I'm not sure how to explain it properly, but like the first couple of chapters is like the reality and then they what they wished had happened or, or like a different time but the same kind of thing I'm, I'm not completely sure about this yeah it, it was just confusing to start off the book that way without a, like a proper explanation and I mean once they started what's her name Mia once she like started going on her quest <laughs> not really a quest but once she started on her journey and like actually got away from the beginning of the book it became more interesting I would still not say I enjoy this book as much as most people seem to have but then again it's the first book and it's not always the best book because you have to set the setting and all that so we'll see what I think of the rest of the series when I uh, well, I, well, when I find those books, really. Yes. And then we have The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. So this is one that I've heard a very mixed reviews on. So I've heard, like, people say that the premise is really good, but the execution was not really there. So basically, um, what's her name? Vivian. Um, she and her, I believe it's her cousin, they do sort of like a, um, a hex on her ex that's like, they've broken up really, so they kind of do a hex accidentally. Um, they don't actually mean to and they don't know that it's actually functioning until this ex shows back up in town um, Like nine years later. Yeah, nine years later and Then they realize uh, that the hex was actually a hex Who knew? Um, I thought this book was kind of cute. I didn't take it too seriously I'm I mean if I think I mean, if I had taken it, like, super seriously, I would have been like, this is a joke. Because most of the book is very much, like, um, it's a bit of a take, on, it's a bit take on a silly kind of a thing. It's, I don't think this book is meant to be taken seriously. And if you do, that's probably where you go wrong. So I thought it was kind of cute and I actually want to read the second book whenever that's coming out. It doesn't say on the back so I don't know why I keep checking but yeah I thought it was cute. And then a tearjerker. So I read Me Before You by Georgia Moyes. Oh my god 
What? What? <laughs> so we follow Lou and she's, um, let's see, she worked at a tea shop. That's where she worked first. So she starts, so we start off with her, like, she's working at a tea shop. She's really enjoying that. However, she kind of loses her job because of circumstances. And then she ends up finding a new job, which is being a carer for a, a he had a motor ac motorcycle accident that's what he had um, and he's in a wheelchair and all that so he's well he can do stuff but he can't do like a lot of stuff so he needs help and yeah they they um it takes a while for them to like warm up to each other because she's like this really really happy girl and he's like this very bitter man um, but they do like warm up to each other and yeah romance sparks and love and flies and all that so there's this thing where basically what's his name will will has given his family like a year to like say goodbye to him really because he has decided that he wants to end his life and he's going to go to this special place in somewhere does it say in the back no i don't think it does um some country i don't remember where um where they will help him end his life and i mean everyone's against it obviously and apparently it's against the law and all that stuff i i don't know the law and i don't know i i don't know those, those kinds of things it's not my forte but yeah it ends up being this whole thing where then the family brings in Lou to like cheer him up in a way, but also help him. Um, and they, it seems to be working, but at the same time, I feel like if we know the titles of the other books, which I think the second book is called After You, uh, meaning it's, it's going to be a sad ending. It's going to be a tearjerker of an ending. And um, I kind of want to see the movie now, and I kind of don't, because uh, I can read books without crying like a baby, watching movies however, yes I will cry like a baby watching this movie, I still kind of want to see it, I still kind of don't, yeah, it's, it's a tearjerker, it's a tearjerker, and a big chunky book the book club pick of the month book for the chaos court was warbreaker by brandon sanderson so this is currently a standalone but it's set to not be a standalone so that's great it took a while for me to like understand the magic system in it because they were saying things that like the because there are like um gods which are reborn basically you've died and then somehow you've been reborn not reborn but they've they've come back to life and then they come back as like bigger better versions of themselves in some sort of way that's a very bad explanation but um the people refer to them as gods and they kind of live this little godly life and stuff and so there's this part where they say the that these gods cannot have kids which i'm like yeah i can totally buy that but then at the same time there's the god king who then one of the um princesses like from another kingdom is set to marry this god king to have this god king's heir and so there's this whole thing where one of the girls they one of the daughters they come in and they're like supposed to have sex with this god king and it's like but didn't you say these gods cannot have children so how is this god king gonna have children that was a very sore point for me for a very long time in the book um yeah it's it's not a major plot point in any way but um i was um i was very confused about that for a very long time and i mean it's all explained in the end so it's fine but I, it, there were some like 
there were some things that were like speaking against itself <laughs> i did really enjoy the book though um so i kind of do want more of this and the way it's ended it's definitely like a i guess an open ending kind of a thing you could just have this book but then at the same time it's like well this might be happening in book two whenever that one comes up but yeah um i really enjoyed this book um so yeah i cannot wait to read more of brandon sanderson um quite possibly um it's going to be a mistborn series now so yeah <laughs> and then some more contemporaries um i read the minute i saw you by page tune so this is one of the books i have uh, a yellow cover of as well and yes i will be reading the yellow cover before i put it with my other books which is probably a good thing because for some reason i'm blanking out most of this book and i didn't read it that long ago so i'm not sure why that's happened um i did enjoy it but i can't say much about it because who knows i know there's a hannah there's a sunny and they sort of like have this little romance going on but also no um it's a cute book i do love page tunes writing so um when i do pick up the yellow cover because it's literally the same cover it's just only yellow uh when i pick that up i hopefully will be remember this book a bit more yeah another page tune book I read was a Lucy in the sky now I do believe this is Paige's first published book I'm pretty sure but also not really so Lucy the main character of it all she's she she's from Australia she's left Australia and gone to live in England and she has her life she has a gorgeous um, boyfriend or more lawyer boyfriend um she has a glamorous job in pr and everything seems to be like going great and then her two best mates that still lives in australia is getting married to each other and so um yeah she sets off to go visit their visit their wedding no she sets off to go to their wedding and all that um at the same time she has accidentally well not really accidentally accidentally on purpose read a text that's come into her boyfriend's uh, mobile and um it's um not maybe the best text in the world to uh see on your boyfriend's phone um but that sort of like gets her even more motivated to like leave him for a bit and go visit her friends and her past really and uh she kind of picks up where she left off but you know, not really but yeah she she goes exploring let's say that <laughs> um i had a fun time reading this book it was cute it was you i didn't feel like you could tell that it was a first novel and i don't know if it's because i've read so many of pages books before or what is she just that good i mean she might just be that good let's be honest with ourselves yeah um i definitely i recommend i do recommend all the pages tunes books um i don't like 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 all of them um there are some that i'm not really fond of the ending of but there you go then i also read the carrie diaries by candy bushnell so this is a prequel i guess to sex in the city and there was a um who did the series there was someone who did the series um a tv series of this book and i did see that a couple of years ago and i liked it which is kind of probably why i picked up this book um so this book is a lot like that series but also not <laughs> so 
Um, yeah. Uh, I do wonder, because there's apparently a second book in this this prequel series and I do wonder if those two books combined do the TV series um, which I wonder because there's this character in the TV series that I really liked and she's not in this book so I'm hoping that she's in the second book um, or if not they did they created that character just for TV. That is also possible. Um, this was such an easy read and a lot more fun to read than the Sex and the City book, which yes, I have read. And uh, I do uh, like the series, TV series a lot more than I do the book. But yeah, um, this book, however, I do believe it's actually going, going under YA. So that might be why it's a lot easier to read. And the last book I want to mention was A Buddy Read with Val and Katie, and it is Iron Gold, which uh, is the fourth book in the Red Rising saga. Um, so I really enjoyed the Red Rising first three books. Um, and I felt, even though I didn't really particularly like the ending of it, um, because it felt too obvious to me. Um, I did really enjoy that series and I felt it ended on a good note. Um, this one, it kind of, well, the first couple of pages, couple of chapters, I don't know how to say, they sort of like recap what happened in the previous three books and like the 10 years, I think, between then and now, now. Uh, and then it takes off again and it's like, it's a lot. So the different with the difference with this one is that we follow, is it four characters? We follow more characters. In the first trilogy, we only follow Darrow. And we do follow Darrow in this one too and a bunch of other people. And I felt it was a bit too much. I did like that... Um, we sort of get the aftermath of the war that is in the first, first trilogy, the first three books. So it's like the aftermath and what happens after wars and all that. But I f kind of felt it wasn't needed. Yeah. So while I think the writing was better and there was some plots plot twists, plot things, scenes, I don't know, um, here and there that I really enjoyed and I thought were very funny and all that. I did not enjoy this book as much as I had hoped. So that can happen. But it's fine. Um, it might just be a case of the, because it's kind of like a new series, but also not. <laughs> um, so it could be that it's just this book and then I'm getting used to a whole different aspect of the same world and then it's going to be fine on the next book and so on. Uh, we shall see. I do have Dark Age somewhere. It's somewhere. I thought it was there, but it's not there. I don't know. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone missing. Jeez. Um... Yeah, so that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 books. I read 10 books. I feel okay with that. I feel okay with that. Um, it's quite a lot of books. So, yeah. Liked some. Didn't like some. There were some hit and misses, but, you know, it's all good. That is 10 books less that I have on my unread books list. What am I calling it again? I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope your reading month was good um, as well. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.